Okay, y'all, here's part two. Um, it started raining and it was getting dark, so I had to get back inside. But um, I want to get to the offensive side of the ball. I guess you could say that I was like really up on a lot of the defensive side of things, but on the offensive side of things, we definitely have some things that we need to take a look at. Um, but I do want to start by, again, talking about Tyler Smith and what he is showing, what, his cap what he's showing in the run game. The way he re redirects gentlemen and his first punch is so, it's just so vicious. In that one scoring drive with Rico Dado, he, he literally basically just ran off of his hip. He basically just ran behind him. And then if we're staying on the offensive line, Matt Farniak, like from the Philly game last year, although there weren't starters a lot, there weren't starters playing, you were able to see like, man, this dude can really get downhill on guys really quick, especially at the second level. He, Tyler Smith and McGovern at, at right guard, we know he thrives there more than he does at left, really pushed that offensive line. There were some, there was some good run blocking in this game from those three gentlemen in particular. With left tackle, I'm over it. I think I said that a couple weeks ago. I'm over it. I'm really over the experimenting. I think we have seen enough from Josh Ball to say, this ain't it. Like, either you're going to go out and get a veteran tackle, or we're going to see, you know, um, Isaac Alicone, or we're going to see Avante Collins, who I think after watching this game about two times, um, actually had a pretty good game as well. Um, he was able to contain the edge, well, to seal the edge a couple of times in this game. And I saw some some good things from him at the point of contact being being physical putting his hands on guys and i'm just over like i at this point if they're not going to go get someone which i really think i hope and pray they do but if they're not then we at least need to see the other gentlemen on this team that could possibly be playing that spot it's exhausting i don't know why i don't know why we're doing this continuous thing as though tyler smith isn't going to be the starter now um, there has been some information that's come out regarding Joe Philbin and him not being too high on McGovern or Tyler Smith. So I hope that that doesn't have anything to do with it, but they need to solidify a starting five and that be it, you know, and then us and then obviously address swing tackle, um, hopefully in this next couple of weeks, because it's to a point to where I feel like if Tyron goes down, it could really derail what we're trying to do as a whole um, this whole season. And we've seen that happen before. Now, also, we have a running back three competition on our hands now. I love Rico Dado. Um, I appreciate what he's done. He has dealt with um, injuries. And sometimes there is someone that comes in that is is more prepared than you that is durable that is showing what they can do right now and that's what malik davis is doing he just has an explosiveness a burst like and he's not afraid to be physical either but he does have like a burst in a second gear also i just think that i don't know if it's because rico Dado had a whole year off but right now like his vision isn't as good there are there are a couple times while i was watching film that i said to myself like a, a better running back like a, a, a running back with better vision would have taken a better would have cut back here and took that lane instead of that lane so um that's a competition I mean yeah Malik Davis came in it's it seems like they had a plan for him scouting him already but he's come in and definitely shaking up what we thought that three spot and this running back room was going to look like all right, while we're talking about the run game, I want to also talk about these young tight ends that definitely don't have no problem getting their nose dirty. My last video, I think I, I mentioned that I felt like the blocking wasn't that good from the young tight ends um, last game in Peyton Hendershot and uh, Jake Ferguson. And especially Jake Ferguson. This is something that he, he did well in college, so I expect more of him. So I, I was uh, a little down on how they blocked last game, but they came out this game and really initiated a lot of the contact um even on uh the returns that you saw with turpin you saw those tight ends really getting out there and um making sure they were downfield to help to help open up lanes for turpin and we'll talk about him here soon so i like what i saw from those gentlemen in the run game because we need our tight ends to block but also they also proved me wrong in this regard and what really tells me that is just how they use Jake Ferguson in motion, even trusting him in the two-point conversion that I didn't like that we're going to talk about again, we're going to talk about later. 
they want to get him involved and i think from what he is showing with the yak ability he's added some things to his bag since college y'all like he really has he just looks a lot a lot more fluid um he looks a lot more fluid even in his route running as a as a tight end and like we talked about i feel like the tight end position is is such a kind of complete position like it takes time to just get that position in totality but he does have the athleticism and the talent to to contribute at this point so i expect to see him getting sprinkled into this offense especially showing what he can do i hate myself how much i say especially well, i'm sorry y'all <laughs> but what he's shown um as a receiver and being able to get yards after catch and take you know take the contact blocking all of those things i am excited to continue to see jake ferguson grow and he definitely was one of my highlights of the game he mckeon and peyton hendershot show some good things on film all right y'all let's get into this receiver core and these kickers and I'm going to get up out of y'all's hair. So since we're talking about receivers, I want to talk about uh, Kevontae Turpin because I think that if you use Kevontae Turpin in different situations, it can maybe turn the tide of why you're so fearful. It can maybe turn the tide of like some of the void that you have at receiver right now, just because he is so speedy, just because if he gets behind someone, it's it's lights out. Like he's a he can really take it to the house every time if you give him the opportunity. So I'm really hoping the Cowboys can incorporate that. But I won't discount the fact that we are seeing instances where they're using, I think in the game, they did like a reverse toss um, end around. And it was successful for him, even though there was a miss, <laughs> there people missed tackles because that's what that's but that's just what he does. And so you get to see a little idea of what he can do. But specifically what he did on special teams, y'all like. Having someone that can flip the field is everything. And when you're talking about this young receiver core that the Cowboys are going to be pushing out, when you're talking about really leaning on your run game and hoping that that opens up the pass, when you kind of what I kind of what I think the Cowboys are going to be doing, when you're talking about doing that, then you want to be having a short field. And this is something again, y'all. This is something that we don't talk about like that. But last season, the Cowboys were starting within their twenty often because there was not a sure returner and so he just immediately to me makes things easier for this offense because also too what I think is going to happen is even if they don't kick the ball to him I think there's there should be some <laughs> there's some panic there like they're going to be avoiding kicking the ball the kicking the ball to him and to me if a team has somebody else they need to game plan for and to be stressed about, you're doing something right. So credit to the Cowboys staff for continuing to scout him because it sounds like it was a continuous thing. Also, I'm sure people in the Metroplex, reporters, um, other beat writers in the Metroplex that know him from TCU continue to push what he was capable of. And credit to him as well for his resilience and what he's done to get to this point in his game. I, um, I'm a fan. I am absolutely a fan. Now, um, I want to talk about Jalen Tolbert. Now, y'all know Jalen Tolbert is, is, that's, 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 you know, that's my fave. But I won't act like he isn't underperforming, especially to my standards. I'm sure to his standards, but to my standards, especially because I think very highly of him. What's even more frustrating for me is that he's having problems with field awareness. And this is not, some, this is not something that Jalen has struggled with before. He has struggled with, you know, some concentration drops, uh, playing through traffic, which we have seen a few times in this preseason. I do think he was just trying to avoid getting crammed, but that's just me. But it's it's what's like it's what's happening to him that's frustrating for me. It would be different to me. It would be different if it wasn't field awareness stuff. But because I know how smart of a player he is, I am a little disappointed in how he is playing right now. Now, um, he did have a couple of uh, good grabs in this game, you know, the 19 yarder. But I also think he, I also did, and I tweeted about this. I think that he worked with Dak all off season. I mean, he went to um, Florida with him. Like they, they worked together all off season and on film, he's getting open. Like the route running is there too, though. Like, like cause, cause that's another thing too. We have to also consider offensive line how much long how much time these these plays are taken to develop and you know QB's missing guys so I did see some decent things from Jalen but the concentration has to be better for him I don't want his confidence to be shaken and I hope that he continues to bounce back 
Okay, so I literally just looked at my notes. So I am a little stressed about Noah Brown's toe because was let's just call a spade a spade. We haven't gotten like enough to see what the rest of these receivers can do. I mean, because Dennis Houston was, we didn't hear anything from him this game. Um, TJ Basher, we didn't hear anything from him this game. So with Noah Brown dealing with a toe injury, I am kind of worried about it just because he's a receiver. And unless it is like a, oh, I scratched my toe situation like a CD lamb, who is gonna be your number two? And so I've, I'm definitely keeping my eyes out for what's happening with Noah Brown. He's had a fantastic camp. He obviously has seniority over these gentlemen, knowing the playbook. It hasn't been enough for me out of the receivers in this preseason. That's partially because they run in the ball a whole bunch. Um, <laughs> they, run, they run in the ball a whole bunch. I will say that the receivers are, are blocking. Dennis Houston is blocking. I mean, but at the same time, yeah, it's it's been a lot of run game driven stuff and the preseason is short. So that's what we got so far. Hoping that Noah Brown can bounce back because it's going to be a problem if he can't. Now, lastly, I want to get into kicker really quick. So uh, Brett Maher was short on that 61 yarder. I don't really know if you can hold that against them like that. They just keep getting off because there's some tangible excuses. It makes me sick. But uh, Liram Haralahu, I, I looked the outlook. I looked at the pronunciation paperwork. I'm trying to do better. But Liram knocked through the 35 yarder, uh, made an extra point. I did not like at all that they went for two. The kickers already aren't getting that many reps. It's not that much preseason. This is a competition. So we need to see them compete. That's why I'm at with the kicking. If they get opportunities to kick in the next game, they 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 better because honestly i don't know who's better than who and brett maher last year well not last year but the year that we cut him we cut him because he kept shanking extra points dan bailey was doing the same thing so can you make extra point we need to make sure like we need to make sure after that that's pretty much all that i saw from the offense oh whew, almost forgot will greer Unless the Cowboys are super just attached to Cooper Rush, which, 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 which I know they have a tendency to do with certain players. I understand, like I said, he won the Vikings game. I understand that he has been here. He knows the playbook, all that stuff. But the better option, the better option that gives you a chance to win games in the absence of Dak Prescott, if necessary, it's clearly Will Greer. Y'all have a good night. I appreciate you guys coming in. I hope this wasn't like entirely too long. I uh, <laughs> I can't wait to talk about um, this upcoming week. And please follow me on Twitter, Aisha with two eyes, and I will talk to y'all later. Please comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I got some things coming for y'all, all right? Bye.